What is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back, everybody. Listen, there is a craze that has been sweeping the world for several months now. And honestly, it goes back even further with that, with cryptocurrency. But it's NFTs. And if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen over the last week or so, I've had some conversations. We're going to call them conversations with some people on Twitter who just don't understand NFTs. And why don't they? I mean, I'm going to be honest. It can be confusing. I mean, I just recently started kind of getting into it and trying to understand it. And it's taken me a while to kind of grasp different things around NFTs and what make them so desirable by people. And just because someone doesn't understand it doesn't mean it's stupid. Doesn't mean it's not worth anything. It means that they just don't want to take the time or maybe they just don't really care enough. Either way, doesn't matter. It shouldn't stop you from believing in something that could potentially be a great investment. And NFTs have started to make their way into the trading card industry. Now, specifically Panini, who if you go online, use their use their app, whatever it may be, you can start purchasing NFTs through them. Now, I'm throwing out these these letters to you, NFTs. And you might be thinking to me, Kyle, what's an NFT? Well, it's pretty basic, honestly. An NFT, it stands for non-fungible token, all right? Now, what does the word fungible mean, Kyle? Well, you know what? I could pull up something in the dictionary. I could pull up something, you know, a long, long explanation on what fungible is. But honestly, fungible means replaceable. That's it. That's what fungible stands for, is replaceable. So when you talk about a non-fungible non token, basically it's a non-replaceable token. It can't be replaced. It's pretty simple. And that's why I said maybe there's some people who just don't understand it or haven't taken the time to look into it. And that's why they're like, I don't get what an NFT is and I don't understand why people would be so excited about it. But I can tell you there is definitely one thing that I can tell you to kind of help you maybe understand these things a little bit better. Visuals! Now, for visuals, listen, I'm gonna try to, again, keep this as simple as possible for you. For those of you that have been around a while, you've probably gotten an envelope like this from me, right? I Every time I do a break, I put these cards, I put your cards in an envelope, and I send them over to you. I have to buy these envelopes in bulk. I don't care what they look like. I just need an envelope. I need a padded envelope about this size that will fit your cards that will get them to you safe and sound. Now, if I buy a bunch of envelopes and I get them and I notice, oh, there may or may not be a tear or maybe the adhesive is missing, I'm gonna send them back and I'm gonna get new ones, right? I don't care. I don't care that this specific one, this specific envelope is torn. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't need to be this specific envelope. I just need an envelope. You go to the store and you buy a can of green beans. You're walking up to the front. You drop it. It gets dented and you're like, ah, I want a different one. You don't need that same one. That same one doesn't matter because it looks exactly like the other one it is exactly like the other one it is easily replaceable you don't have any emotional attachment to it you don't care about it unless it's your special can of green beans that somehow brings you luck then maybe that's a little bit different but it's just a can of green beans it's just an envelope trading cards are a little bit different now for years and years and years basically what we have said for trading cards is we collect them because for some reason or another, it means something to us. Maybe it's your favorite player. Maybe it's your favorite team. Maybe that card right there, maybe it's the first card you ever pulled. Maybe you were out with your dad and you were doing you, you were going through a card, card show and you bought a pack of cards and you got your very first autograph card. It means something to you, right? Those cards are a little bit different than envelopes. They mean something to you. You collect them for specific reasons. You collect players for specific reasons or teams or autographs or memorabilia. Heck, they even make numbered cards, right? Yeah, 
you might get, you know, an Aaron Rodgers numbered 14 out of 50. That's awesome. You love it. That's the only card like that. There is no other card numbered 14 to 50 that's an Aaron Rodgers card of that specific kind. Maybe you want a different one. Maybe you get 12 of 40. Well, he's number 12 on the Packers. That even means even more because now the card number is his jersey number. So even if you were to get another numbered card, let's say 40 out of 40, it's not that same one. It's not his jersey number. Maybe it doesn't mean as much to you. Maybe you get one out of 40 and you want it because it's the first one that came out of production. You're not going to trade it for 40 out of 40 because that's not the first one. So even though these NFTs might seem a little bit different, it's basically been the same concept that we've used year after year after year after year for trading cards that people have been buying, trading, selling, collecting for hundreds of years. It's been happening forever. The only difference is, is now you just can't physically hold it in your hand. Now for some old school people, that's what you want, right? And that's fine. I've got nothing against it. Yes. I would love to have a specific card that I can just sit and hold in my hand. Maybe you've got a man cave at home. Maybe you've got a, you've got some sort of, that's fine. This isn't to say, let's look down on hard copy cards or anything like that. This is to help you understand sometimes different things are fun. And that's what NFTs are. NFTs are meant to be fun. They're a new way of collecting. They're a new way of potentially selling. They're a new way of maybe generating a little bit of profit. And it just overall, again, it's fun. So it doesn't matter if you like NFTs or if you like actual physical cards, it's fun. It's collecting. And yes, one is a little bit different and maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but we're, we're a world that's evolving. More things are done online now. More things are done through the internet and more people can connect that way as well. I mean, you sell your cards sometimes maybe on eBay or Facebook, different areas like that. You can do the same thing with NFTs. You can reach all over the world. And yeah, maybe the collection isn't sitting in your bedroom next to your nightstand or isn't hanging up behind you on the wall, but NFTs are safe. They're, they're saved for you. You go in and you can take a look at them and you can go through your binder and you can say, man, I've collected this, 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 and this, and this. For those of you that play video games like Warzone, I, you spend 20 bucks because you want to have this cool new operator that has an awesome outfit. You can't freaking hold it. You're never going to touch that outfit. It's on your, so it doesn't matter, but you've bought it. It's yours. You can use it. You can look at it. It's cool. It's something that you enjoy. It's the same way with NFTs. Yes, you can't physically hold it, but you're not gonna hold that video game character. That's never gonna happen. It's not physical. You can't put it in your hand and carry it around. You can't stick it in your pocket. So yes, it's different, but that's all right. Sometimes things that are different are cool. So me personally, how have I been getting into the NFT world? I've been doing it through Panini. Now this is not sponsored or anything by them in any way, shape or form. It's just the first route that I've gone to do it. So let's take a look at Panini. Let's take a look at how it is and why not only is it like safe and secure, but some cool things about it that maybe with NFTs you've never seen before. All right, I got to apologize in advance. The, the color's a little bit off, okay? For some reason or another, when I capture the Panini website, the colors don't, and I spent a friggin' hour on this trying to fix it and it just didn't work, but that's okay. That's not that big of a deal. But on Panini's website, you can go here and you can look through the blockchain, okay? And the blockchain online, again, maybe you don't understand, you know, what is a blockchain? The blockchain is basically like an online bank that everybody can view, okay? You can't go to my bank, and I'm not gonna tell you where I bank, but you can't go to my bank and look at my records, can you? No, you can't. The blockchain, you can. The blockchain, through Panini specifically, you can see every transaction that has been made on somebody's account for a card. You can see what's been paid for it. You can see who paid for it. You can see all that information. The blockchain is basically like an exchange through a bank, but online and public. That's what it is. 
Now you're not gonna be able to go on there and see exactly like how much money do I have in my account or things of that nature, that won't happen. But you can see different type of things that have been done. So sitting in the blockchain, taking a look, a lot of different things we can do. First off, we can go into my cards. You can take a look at everything that I have right here. I'm gonna open it up for you. Again, the colors are a little bit off, but these are just some of the cards that I still have in my collection right now. Now, I've sold a few of them already, and I've actually already made my pro I've already made a little bit of a profit off of this. Is it much? No, but it's a start. And now I've done something for fun that I've actually made a little bit of money at. I haven't lost any money. Why is that not something that's cool? People are getting more and more into this. Now, for instance, recently, I pulled this Mac Jones downtown number 208 of 500. Now, there are some cards that I've sold two other downtown cards, a Lamar Jackson and a Troy Palomalu. I sold both of them. Those, when you were looking at them, they're cool cards. But the Mac Jones rookie right here, of course I want to have that. Of course I want to keep it. It's just like any other card that you would pull. You're looking for the hot rookies of that year. That's where we're at right now with these. Now, one thing I can do is I can start an auction and I can put it out there for everybody to start bidding on. Now, another thing that you can do too is you can make these cards visible and I haven't done it with two of these yet. You can make these cards visible to everybody. Meaning if somebody were to be looking for a card, they can see these cards pop up. They can type in the card, they can search for it, Boom, they type in a Mac Jones downtown. Mine might be one of the ones that pop up and they could see that and they could potentially purchase it. I've had multiple offers for this card already. My highest offers so far would be $15. I'd basically make my money back. Actually, I'd make $5 on that pack. But here's the thing, I don't wanna do that because in the blockchain, I can see how much this card is sold for. Let's go to view sales histories. This card has sold for, in the past day, $199, $161. On the 5th, it sold for $129. On the 5th, or excuse me, on the 3rd, $120. I can see all of the sales from this card recently. So when someone sends me an offer of $15, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna check the sales history. $199, Nobby, you're not getting my card for 15 bucks. That's part of the blockchain. You can see what has happened with cards similar to yours. Well, maybe you want to take a look at what does the current market look like? You can pop it up here and you can see other listings as well. Like right now, there's a current card out there, current offer for $350. Why? I don't know. There's another one that's for a hundred. That's more in line with what we've been seeing so far. 46, 25, 20, 45, 45. You can see these for all of these cards right now as different listings, okay? That's cool. Right now in the card world, things are crazy with it, right? People are wanting trading cards again. And the excitement over trading cards has moved us into looking at different forms of collecting. And that's what NFTs are. It's a different form of collecting. This right here too says it's owned by krich1532. My name is on it. So if someone comes and look at Mac Jones 208 out of 500 downtown rookie card, it's mine. I don't care if you take a screenshot. You've got a screenshot shared on your, saved on your phone. <laughs> Have fun with it. Have fun looking at it. I don't care. Doesn't matter. You can do the same thing of a, of a real card, right? I post a real card online. Someone could take a picture at it and look at it. It's not theirs. It's never going to be. Who cares? I don't care if you take a screenshot of my NFT. So what? It's mine. If someone comes to me with this Mac Jones, let's say he beats Buffalo on Monday Night Football. Someone comes to me for this Mac Jones and says, Kyle, I want to give you $200 for it. Sure. Sold. Your picture isn't going to sell for $200. Your picture isn't going to sell for 20 cents. It's not going to happen. It's not yours. It doesn't matter that I can't physically hold this card. It doesn't matter that I can't put it in a binder. It's mine. It's attached to my account. I can come in here and see the things that I've collected. Scroll to the bottom here and it gives you a listing history of everybody that's ever owned it. 
So you also can track your cards. You know who has owned it, what, from what dates were they owned till. That's pretty cool to me. It's different and it's not understood by a lot of people, but it is pretty darn cool. Now, you know what we should do? We should open some packs. I actually just bought some packs. Panini just released some Mosaic 2021 NFL NFT Mosaic Camo Pink Parallel Packs. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna open them up right now. We're gonna see if we can pull any sweet pink parallels. And let's do this thing together. And you get cool little, cool little things like that. So this comes with two base cards and then it comes with your pink parallel. So we got a Matt Ryan. That's a base. And also out of these, basically every card is numbered in some way, shape or form. So yeah, there are 2000 of this Matt Ryan, but there's only 2000 of them, right? It's not like this serial number isn't gonna be there. And if you take a picture, it doesn't matter. A Javon Curse. Again, you can see the number there on the left-hand side. And our pink parallel from this one will be... Ugh. Drew Locke. Now, the pink parallels are numbered to 499 out of this set. So, nothing good here. Nothing good here. Let's go in back to... Let's view all these packs. Let's open our next pack. All right. Let's keep our fingers crossed for a little bit better luck and see what we can get out of this one. Uh, we got a Joe De Lamerlu. Reggie Bush. Got some old school guys in here. And the pink camo parallel is... Minshew Mania. Gardner Minshew. Still showing up as a Jacksonville Jaguar, unfortunately, but that's all right. So, nothing crazy yet. Nothing crazy yet. All right. Let's keep our fingers crossed for these next two packs. See if we can get ourselves a nice rookie. Oh. Experiencing a little volume. Wasn't going to let me in there for a second. All right. First card. Who we got here? We got Malcolm Jenkins. Next card. We've got Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa. Now, since he's a rookie, this card is only numbered to 9.99. The rookies have actually been selling pretty decent. You can sell all the rookies for at least a few dollars a piece. So I'm going to pop him up, especially with the season that he's having. I'm going to put him up for sale right away. And then our pink is Zach Cunningham. So no luck with the pink parallels yet. No luck with the pink parallels yet. We got one more pack to open. Let's rip this one open. And let's see if we can hit anything on our last pack. And if we don't, that's all right. It's the same as opening a real pack. We missed out on a few. It happens. Let's see here. Dante Culpepa. Our next base is Cam Newton with the pats. And our final pink parallel is a Jean Riggins from the Washington football team. So... Not a whole lot there. Obviously, these packs were not that great. But again, it's, it's the luck of the draw with anything. With anything. They do have some nice cards coming out really soon that are going to have some more high-end stuff with them. But just so you know, if you go in, you can go into the NFT store. And you can go like browse by sport. And you can see other options that are out there. Like this Kyler Murray one of one. This Roger Staubach, one of one. 96000 dollars People are buying these. People are buying these NFTs. They want them. They think it's cool. It's a new way. Oh, here's a bunch of basketball ones too that are popping up here. Baseball two showing up here. People want these they think it's cool just like you and i might so is there some money to be made absolutely just like there would be in a normal in a normal card or a normal pack or a normal box there's always gonna be money to be made in it how long will it last who knows 
Maybe it dies out in two months. Maybe it dies out in a year. Maybe it doesn't die out. Maybe this is the new wave. Maybe this is something that people are going to get excited about. Whatever it may be, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. If you don't, you don't. More for everybody else. But I've been getting a lot of questions about NFTs. What do I think about them? Do I think it's something... I'm still skeptical in some ways, but I'm not skeptical enough to say absolutely not. I'm not skeptical enough to say, I'm not even gonna take a look at it. I think they're cool. I might collect a little bit more. If I get it, if I, you know, get myself a good card like that, Mac Jones, I'll sell them and I'll make a profit because I've already been selling them. So I know people are buying them. I mean, the physical money has come into my account. I've seen it, I've touched it. I've used it to pay for other things. It's happened. So, is it a long-term thing? I don't know. We'll see. I'm skeptical of it. It may not happen, but it doesn't matter. It's cool. I'm going to get on the ground floor. I'm going to mess around with it a little bit. And who knows? Maybe we'll strike gold. We'll see. But Headliner Nation wanted to put together a video for you that helped explain it a little bit more. So you understood what NFTs were and why it might be something that you would be interested in in the future. Hit the like button, subscribe here to Headliner Breaks if you haven't already, and make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on NFTs. Are you gonna get into it? Have you already started? Have you pulled anything cool? Let me know in the comments down below. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. All of you stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll catch you on the next episode of Headliner Breaks.